recognize and apologize that for many people tonight is a religious holiday. Uh, I know many people will be missing tonight's broadcast because they are uh, enjoying Passover Seder. Uh, we are tape recording this entire town hall so it can be shared after the fact. So please, if you know someone who wanted to watch tonight but was unable, please be sure to let them know they can watch this recording. Um, we're also excited, you know, we are uh, using a new tool called Thought Exchange. Many of you submitted questions to us in advance. We will be answering those. But once we get through the uh, first part of our program tonight, we will be giving everyone an opportunity to uh, weigh in and see what questions we haven't answered yet that you want to get answered to. Uh, you also will have an opportunity to rate those questions so we know which are of the highest interest to the most viewers. So thank you for participating in Thought Exchange, which we will be using tonight. Uh, I just want to give you a quick overview of our agenda tonight. Uh, around 610, I will be introducing Dr. Allison Briscoe-Smith. She is the Director of Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion at the Wright Inst Institute. She will give us an overview on mental health and well-being strategies. And she'll also give us some really important resources to help everyone cope with the stress, the anxiety that we are all experiencing because of this pandemic. Um, I also wanna recognize that Dr. Briscoe Smith is an expert in racial disparities in health outcomes. This is an issue that Oaklanders care a lot about. And this is an opportunity to elevate the conversation that we believe this nation must have, uh, not just around COVID-19, but around all health disparities by race. We also next are gonna hear from Monique Berlanga. She is a tenants rights directing attorney at Centro Legal de la Raza. And she will talk about the latest uh, rights and resources for tenants and renters, um, any, uh, and, and as well as other answers to questions that we've received. Next will be Derek Schoenmacher, uh, Workers' Rights Directing Attorney, also at Central Legal de la Raza. Uh, again, about resources, benefits for workers. Um, we just saw a chart, and this is an unprecedented moment in American history. We have never seen this level of unemployment before. So find out how you can get through it and the really exceptional resources that the federal government and the state government are making available right now. And then finally, uh, our own Alex McBride, the city's chief resilience officer, and also our lead in community resilience as part of our emergency response for the city of Oakland. Uh, and now I'll give you a brief overview of, of things, uh, resources and, and news updates uh, for, for this week. If you can start my slides, please, Messiah. Thanks. All right, you all know that you're at the virtual town hall. Uh, again, we are gonna be using Thought Exchange. Oh, wait, different slide. Oh, there we go. Uh, there, there are three steps for Thought Exchange. You will see prompts if you are on social media. Uh, you, there will be a, a link to share your thoughts. You can star and rank and rate the different uh, suggested topics, and then you will see the results. If you are not participating by social media, next slide, you can actually join the conversation by texting. You text to 72855, the number 780-601-886. By texting that number, you will then get prompted to uh, offer your ideas about what topics you want our speakers to respond to. One more time, you can text to 72855, Text the number 780-601-886. All right, next slide. Uh, the big reminder this week is that all people are recommended to cover their mouths with cloth covering. 
we really encourage you to just use a bandana, a scarf. I actually got some cute custom sewn masks from Leslie Evers, a local designer. Um, but please do try and preserve medical masks for our healthcare workers and our first responders. Uh, we did get encouraging news this week from our governor, Gavin Newsom, around um, an increased supply of personal protective equipment for our healthcare and frontline workers. We're feeling much better about knowing that our critical workers are gonna be protected as they subject themselves to much higher risks. So please, out of respect for them, preserve medical level masks for these critical workers and please use a cloth covering as you go out and do your grocery shopping or other essential activities or exercise. Next slide. Uh, we made a lot of progress this week in serving our unsheltered or homeless residents. Uh, we received 91 trailers this week from the state of California, and the, they joined 15 trailers that we had received um, a couple months earlier. Uh, a few of these are going out to surrounding cities in uh, Alameda County, but most of them will be staged near the Oakland Coliseum in East Oakland. Uh, they will be housing people who are particularly vulnerable to COVID, not people who are sick, but our homeless residents who are most vulnerable. That's people over the age of 65, people with other health conditions such as diabetes, and people who have compromised immune systems. These are the folks that would become most sick if they are exposed to COVID. We are working night and day to get them off of the streets and on into a socially separated, safe shelter. Uh, we also continue to watch the County of Alameda fill up the two hotels that were secured a couple weeks ago. Again, one hotel is for symptomatic unsheltered people. I am happy to report that as of today, we have not had a single positive test for COVID in our unsheltered population. We do, however, have people who have symptoms and we have been able to take care of them in one of these hotels. The second hotel is similarly for our unsheltered residents who are particularly vulnerable due to their medical condition or age. Uh, I also want to celebrate World Central Kitchen. They have served 1,080 meals, hot meals, to our unsheltered residents. You may remember that Chef Jose came to Oakland to help the passengers on the Grand Princess, the cruise ship that sought refuge here in Oakland. Well, Chef Jose and his team never left Oakland. They fell in love and they have been serving beautiful hot meals to our homeless residents over these past few weeks. Again, a total of 5,400 meals have been served across the three RV sites and six community cabin sites. We are so grateful that we are being able to take care of our unsheltered residents during these difficult times. Next slide. Um, another exciting development this week is Alameda County has now put up uh, a very interesting health dashboard. It is showing the number of cases as well as unfortunately the deaths um, of caused by COVID-19, both countywide at the city of Berkeley, which has its own local health jurisdiction, the total, and then also breaking down by gender, age, and then by city. Uh, Oakland has represents 157 of the COVID cases. Um, while race is not on the dashboard right now, the county heard our demand to put racially disaggregated data about this disease up for the public to view. And so they are working on that. They have said yes to that request. And my understanding is that the disaggregated by race data should be up by this Friday on this same dashboard. Next slide. Uh, 
Again, you might have heard that this week we opened a second testing site near Lake Merritt. Uh, and again, we are expanding the people who can take advantage of these free COVID-19 tests. We now have expanded this offering to uninsured workers. You do not have to have insurance anymore to take advantage of the city's two COVID-19 testing sites. We do ask though, that you have your employer register with the city. Uh, we are trying to offer this testing to anyone who is working in direct care services. That is food delivery, grocery store workers, uh, anyone who's working in residential care, in child care, all of our homeless service providers, all the people who work at the great organizations that you're gonna hear from tonight, like Centro Legal, who's providing legal counseling during this crisis. All these employees are welcome to take advantage of the city of Oakland's testing site. If you please have your organization email COVID-19 testing at oaklandca.gov. Uh, again, we are not testing everyone. We are looking for people with symptoms and then anyone that they have come in contact with. All right, next slide. Oh, this is a big announcement. I think Alex is gonna go into a little bit more detail about this, but we will be announcing some details tomorrow about Oakland slow streets. Because of the reduction in car traffic, we will be closing off a number of streets so that bicyclists and pedestrians can spread out and exercise and take in fresh air safely on Oakland streets free of cars. Uh, next slide. Uh, this is the map that shows you where those streets are going to be. But again, Alex can go into more detail, but lots of streets available throughout the city, uh, particularly where folks live. Next slide. I know that a lot of people are interested in resources for our small businesses. And this week uh, in in concert with the mayors of Oakland, San Francisco, and San Jose, Facebook announced $15 million in small business grants. These are cash grants. These are not advertising credits, which is another program they're running. If your business is interested in applying, please go to facebook.com slash business, put in your email address so you will be notified right away as soon as those grant applications are available. I can tell you that the city of Oakland through our own COVID-19 relief fund offered um, a half a million dollars of grants immediately to our smallest businesses. We received more than 1,100 applications and it broke our hearts to only award the, the 90 most um, need, needing uh, businesses for those initial grants. I promise you that I am out fundraising. I am trying to get additional grants to Oakland's own uh, emergency relief grant program for our smallest businesses. But I'm happy to say that we have definitely targeted some of the lowest income business owners in the city Roughly 75% of the recipients of Oakland's grants uh, were in the income category of less than 50% of area median income. So these were very struggling entrepreneurs, the ones that need our help the most. Next slide. Um, again, this and other great work has been done by the Oakland COVID-19 Relief Fund um, this fund has provided funding for our undocumented worker relief fund that Central Legal has stood up for extra health services and outreach for our immigrant communities, the small grants program that I talked about, and it's also funding those two testing sites. You too, if you can, any amount is not, is not too small, please consider making a contribution at oaklandfund.org oaklandfund.org tax deductible and this money is going out and helping the oakland community especially our most vulnerable in rapid time next slide 
Uh, we also are accepting volunteers. Um, I'm happy to report we sent Meals on Wheels about 127 new volunteers just this week. Uh, we are doing health checks to our seniors by phone. You don't even have to leave your house unless you really want to. We have safe and appropriate volunteer opportunities for those who want to help during this crisis. Um, you've got the link up there, bit.ly slash volunteer, or you can email communityengagement510 at gmail.com. Again, the email is communityengagement510 at gmail.com. All right, next slide. Another new city um, service that is free and available to help people get through uh, this pandemic and this shelter in place, especially those of us who have kids at home. I am one of those people. <laughs> the Oakland Public Library is doing um, read along story times. They also are even offering some uh, online tutoring for students who are at home. Uh, I know parents need a break uh, from having these kids at home. So Mondays, Wednesdays, and Saturdays are play and learn story times. Uh, and Wednesdays in particular are uh, conducted in Spanish. Next slide. Don't forget, Oakland Unified School District is still providing free breakfast, lunch, and grocery pickups during this entire school closure, 12 sites throughout the city. Some of them have added diapers and feminine hygiene. Um, again, grab and go Mondays and Thursdays from 8 a.m. to noon. Fantastic. You do not have to be an OUSD family. Any any family in Oakland, no matter where your kids go to school, any family with a child under 18 is eligible to pick up grab and go meals and groceries from the OUSD site. Next slide. We recognize that during the anxiety, during the shelter in place, uh, we are seeing increases nationally in domestic violence, in fear of domestic violence. We're seeing alcohol consumption go up and certainly fear, depression, and anxiety are understandably on the rise. Please know that no one should live under those circumstances. The Alameda County Family Justice Center remains open and operating full of resources and support for anyone who is fearful that they are or may become a victim of domestic violence. So please visit the, their website at ACFJC, again, Alameda County Family, Family Justice Center, acfjc.org. Uh, the crisis hotline is 1-800-947-8301. And I know that uh, Dr. Briscoe Smith will be giving some additional uh, resources in her talk, but I felt this was important enough that it should be mentioned twice. All right, and finally, my last slide, my last piece of update. We recognize that for many people of faith, this is a holy week. We know this is the second night of Passover. We know Friday is Good Friday, and this is Easter Sunday. And it will be incredibly difficult for many of us of faith to not gather together as our traditions have dictated for centuries. Uh, so we please uh, ask you to celebrate with us as a city tomorrow, Friday, as we declare it a citywide day of reflection, a day of reflection for people of faith, of all faiths, of no faith to reflect on this moment, what it means to us, what it means to us to be in society. And we will be sharing on social media some ways that you can participate in tomorrow's day of reflection. We also have extended to churches and synagogues and other places of worship throughout the city tutorials on how to stream services and how to help your congregants participate in religious services 
via phone or through internet connections. If you or your church needs help or support in moving your services online, please call my office at 510-238-3141 to get assistance. Again, for anything, we are still answering our phones in the mayor's office. That's 510-238-3141. Again, that is your update this week on what the city of Oakland is doing to respond to COVID-19. Uh, we will continue to be holding these resource town halls every week, every Thursday, 6 to 8. With that, I am excited to turn this over to Dr. Allison Briscoe-Smith. Dr. Briscoe-Smith is going to talk about how we can all take care of our own and others' wellness during this incredible, difficult time, as well as what we as the city and as government should be doing to address health disparities. Dr. Briscoe Smith, thank you for joining us. Thank you so much. I'm hoping my mic is on, so I, I assume that people can hear me. Got a thumbs up. Um, thank you. Um, I, I'm really excited to, to be here and to be in community with fellow Oaklanders um, and uh, excited to kind of talk about what we can do as an amazing um, city. Uh, it's a place I've called home for 20 years and I appreciate this being a community with everybody. Um, what I'm gonna talk about just for a few minutes is kind of uh, the state of mental health as it is now. Um, and then moving to some ideas about how we can address our mental health and wellness um, and some disparities uh, ideas. And then I'll lastly with some resources. So that's the kind of arc what I'll do. I won't talk for too long, I hope, just in, in order to make sure that we have a lot of space um, for questions. I just wanna begin by kind of locating myself as a child psychologist primarily um, and a psychologist that focuses a lot on trauma. So. I do work with adults, but typically in the context of kids, but work a lot in schools. And so I'm really holding in mind um, how kids are faring during this time and how we as um, parents are faring as well. Um, I also am a parent of three kids, um, two of whom are in Open Unified. And so I'm also kind of seeing the ways in which our open schools and our teachers and our staff have been going through extraordinary means to um, connect and to serve our kids. So with that kind of context in mind, I'll jump in. So state of mental health um, today, I don't think it takes an expert to tell you is pretty rough. Um, we're all experiencing extraordinarily large amounts of anxiety. So folks that were already struggling with issues of anxiety and depression before, or maybe were kind of coping with it, it's all been really elevated. So there's a lot that's really kind of going on for us and we're definitely watching out for increased anxiety, increased depression, and depression is related to social isolation. Um, I had the ability to be in community with a developmental pediatrician who talked about this time as a moment of potential toxic and what we can do to actually try to not make it so toxic if possible. And so that's just a way for us to kind of think about things are really hard right now. Um, and we need to be kind of considerate and thoughtful about that for ourselves, but also for those uh, that we're in community with. Um, as such, the mental health field has worked to um, to really provide some innovative and new services. You know, I'm not typically used to providing therapy services over the phone or via Zoom, um, but we're getting used to that now. And so there's a lot of resources that are coming around. So I really encourage folks to, to reach out um, for individual support if that's something that you feel like might be helpful to you. Um, and we can talk about some of the resources for that later. So in addition to the kind of anxiety and these other things that are, are raising, um, we also are really quite worried about, um, as was mentioned before, an escalation in things like domestic violence and uh, also child abuse as well. So there are a number of resources that were alluded to before. I see them also linked within the chat, but it's really important to know that the shelter in place um, does not mean that you have to stay at home in the midst of uh, abuse. That there are um, still shelters that are available and open, that there's still call lines that you can access, and there's still um, other resources that you can reach out for if you are in a place of um, not feeling safe within your own home. So I just wanna make sure that that's a message that, that does get out and it's a place of concern for us. It also means that it's an opportunity um, for folks to be reaching out to families that you know are struggling, to reach out for just an extra 
um, person to talk to, to talk about the stress, to see what things are going on in terms of parenting, um, to try to be some sort of relief um, in community as much as possible. So to kind of go from the state of affairs um, is to kind of go to perhaps some, some of the things that we're learning in community about how to deal with these health issues um, and deal with this current um, pandemic. Um, so there's been a lot of effort and movement to kind of coalesce what we've already learned um, through other big challenges. While this one is particular, um, I really appreciate that the that Oakland has an attention to, and we have a person that's holding on to resilience in particular. Um, resilience is something that we really should be focused on here. Our communities have gone through really difficult things before. And so it's an opportunity to pay attention to how did we survive those things before and bring them here. So lessons learned from our own communities, lessons learned from the ways that, you know, Oakland in particular has survived a lot of different things, um, has been by um, committing to action uh, but before we get to the action, I want to back up and think about first, we have to put our oxygen mask on first, right? So if, in order for us to be available, to be of service to our kids, to our families, we have to be able to check ourselves and make sure that we are doing as well as possible. The way that we can do that, I'm going to offer up is through really tiny, small, concrete, controllable things. The invitation is to find some small thing that brings you comfort or bring you joy and make sure you do that small thing each day. Now that may seem like, you know, I really liked going out and get my nails done. Well, you can't do that. I really liked going on a trip. Can't do that. I'm talking about small. Like, is there a book that you read that you want to reread? Is there a song that you really like? Is there um, that pair of socks that you want to wear all day long? Go ahead. The idea is small, tangible, concrete, and controllable. Those are the things that we can do right now in this moment because so much is out of our control. So much feels really big. So I'm gonna encourage us to kind of come down to that place. The other thing that is small, concrete and controllable is your breath. There are a number of resources out there for mindfulness and breathing. There are a number of ways that we are um, part of our faith communities that move in our prayer or um, pray to regulate our breath and our connection. Do all those things and know that those are the things that we are doing to take care of ourselves. The second thing I wanna invite us to kind of pay attention to is grace. And that's kind of the idea that, um, you know, this is new for us. And uh, I'll, I'll put it this way. Um, I purposely chose not to be a fifth grade teacher. Um, and suddenly I'm a fifth grade teacher and a third grade teacher, and I have a two year old, so I'm running a daycare too. So why would all of a sudden on Tuesday, because we're told to stay in a house, I would become great at being that teacher. So I have to be in community and be with myself to, to have some grace that I ha I'm new to this. My children are new to this. My family is new to this. So that's one way that we can have some grace with ourselves. I also encourage them to have grace with our community. Many folks are really struggling and we're seeing that. I saw in the host of the kind of questions, a lot of people are really frustrated um, with each other. And I wanna invite us to just have a moment of, of grace that you know perhaps a person is really going through a hard time Perhaps a person who is acting in a way that we don't like or is not standing six feet away from me in the line at Safeway, maybe they're in a, having a hard time. So how do we have that kind of communication and grace? I think that's the thing if we think about what Oakland is really good at, um, it's really about being in community and it's really about um, having a whole lot of grace and spirit with how we treat each other. So let's remind us of that. The other piece is to think about how we can move into action. Um, again, that's another thing that Oakland has been really good at, uh, has been moving into action. So I want to invite us to, uh, to find small, tangible, concrete ways to move into action. That may mean calling that neighbor, um, checking on, on the elder, um, going to a Passover Seder via Zoom. It may be doing small kinds of things like that, but that's about kind of outreach and connection. We heard also that there are opportunities for volunteering, but just really to think about there are small concrete things that when they add up are really, really important. So again, to kind of go through the, the ideas here is that we should be able to um, do some own work for ourselves so that we can be of service to others and so we can be well to give ourselves and our community a whole lot of grace and to also pay attention to our action. I just want to end by kind of thinking about and holding on to um, the issues of racial disparities. Um, I think uh, I personally have been in a place where uh, I've been frustrated by the amount of surprise um, related to racial disparities because I think, and maybe this is something that we in Oakland know really well, 
we're not surprised that there's a disproportionate impact of global crisis on communities of color. Um, and in fact, we're used to seeing that and feeling that. So um, I'm gonna hold on to, I hope that this is a place that we can have allies join and really move into further action to address the issues that we know have already been here. This is not a new story in terms of having black and brown folks uh, and um, our Asian brothers and sisters be disproportionately impacted by how racism unfolds. So I'm really looking forward to hearing from the other speakers as well as we think about you know, tenants' rights and workers' rights. Those are also issues that have been heralded by our communities of the color for a long time. Um, and so let's not be so overwhelmed by our surprise that we don't move into quick action to address these issues. And again, that I know that I'm a community and on this call with so many folks that have already been a lot of work regarding these disparities. Um, and that these health disparities are not a surprise to any of us walking around in these black and brown bodies or any of us that have been you know, paying attention to this research for a second. So I'm really eager to, to think about how we move to um, move into action in community um, and I'm thankful for this opportunity. I'll, I'll pause there and I look forward to being able to uh, answer some questions or just be in dialogue. Um, Dr. Briscoe Smith, I think uh, we have a slide for you that, that shows some uh, resources. Um, you can feel free to, to speak it out for people yes. on the telephone. Yeah, let me speak through a couple of these and thanks for the, the reminder around the, the resources. So first of all, is, is, as was stated before, there are resources regarding domestic violence. There's a national domestic violence um, hotline, which um, the phone number for that is 1-800- 799-SAFE. Again, 1-800-799-SAFE. There is also Alameda County Family Justice Center as well. Um, and that is a place that is, provides a whole lot of services for domestic violence and, and also for commercial sexual exploitation of, of um, our youth as well. So it's another place that people call to get help. So general information, the Client Navigator line is 510-267-8800. And the domestic violence crisis hotline is 800-947-8301. Again, 800-947-8301. I did also want to provide a couple of links to some concrete, small, tangible resources. Um, UCSF has a website um, through the Department of Psychiatry that has a well-curated list of um, resources. Resources, especially in the context of things like parenting in this moment or being uh, of service uh, to elders. And so that website is listed, but it's basically, if you were to Google UCSF psychiatry and coronavirus, it'll be the first thing that comes up. Another local resource um, in Berkeley is the Greater Good Magazine and the Greater Good Science Center, of which I'm a fellow. Um, and they have, again, a number of widely available um, resources to do something like hey, help take you through a meditation, help you in a gratitude practice, um, help to kind of develop that. So I would just look up Greater Good and uh, that'll be a resource um, that you can use there. Um, so those are some of the resources that are available. And again, as we're in dialogue, I'm happy to share um, additional uh, resources. I also know that there are a lot of clinicians um, that are really available and really interested in, in helping out in this moment. And there are some you know, organizations that are about kind of facilitating access as well. So there is help out there. There are helpers out there. We just have to be in community enough to get connected. Great, thank you so much, Dr. Briscoe Smith. Um, next, we're gonna hear from Monique Berlanga. She is the Tenants Right Directing Attorney at Centra Legal. Uh, they do a lot of the tenant counseling for the city of Oakland, so thank you. You've been incredible partners to us, um, both in the work we do together, but everything that you do for our community. So I'm gonna turn it over to Monique for some general comments answers to the top two or three questions that we got ahead of time and also some resources. Thank you, Monique. Great, thank you. And, and thank you for creating this space um, for the community tonight, it's very important. Um, okay, so taking a little bit about our attendance rights practice uh, here at Centro. Centro has been around for 50 years based out of the Fruit Bail providing legal services in many different iterations over the years. Um, I'm the director of our attendance rights practice and we provide legal services to low-income tenants throughout the county. Um, through eviction defense representation, 
know your rights work, uh, drop-in clinics, affirmative litigation, and policy advocacy. Um, right now, our clinics are all operating remotely, and we are being inundated with calls um, from Oakland tenants, hundreds every week. Um, the number one thing we're hearing from tenants is they have lost income and are scared that they're going to be evicted because they can't pay their rent. Um, and the speaker before me brought up how this is just really lifting up the disparate impact that these types of crises have on people of color here. Um, I don't know if people saw the headlines recently that a third of tenants across the country were unable to pay their rent in April, and that's only going to grow larger in May um, as people will use you know, the last of their savings to eke by in April. Um, and we all know that people of color are least likely to be able to work remotely, um, most likely to be renters and most likely to be rent burdened. So people of color here in Oakland are being hit the hardest, for sure. Um, so my hope today is there's a lot of information going on around, going on um, out there on social media and in public regarding different developments in tenants' rights law at the federal level, the state level, the local level. It's city by city, hour by hour, things are changing and people are confused. People are scared. I'm, all, I'm hoping basically to provide you a framework of what the most important protections are for you here in Oakland and what resources are available to you to help get clarification and to help walk you through this process that um, could, it could go on for a long period of time. So first I'll start off by giving you a broad overview, and give you some resources that you can access for assistance, and then end with uh, answering two or three of the top questions that were submitted ahead of time. Um, okay, so information on developments in landlord-tenant law over the past few weeks. Um, this past Monday, the Judicial Council of California adopted an emergency rule that effectively stops all evictions other than those necessary to protect public health and safety for the duration of the COVID-19 emergency. Um, the rule is applicable to all courts throughout the state, all eviction cases, whether they're based on a tenant's missed rent payment or another reason. Um, the new court rule will apply until 90 days after the governor lifts the state of emergency related to the COVID-19 pandemic. The rule also delayed, delays trials in pending eviction cases for 60 days. Um, so that was a huge development uh, for the entire state. Here locally, our Superior Court in Alameda County is closed through May 3rd, and the sheriff is not performing lockouts through that date. And then mo people may have seen in the media, there are a series of different local moratoria that have been passed that provide stronger protections that would have, than what have been provided at the state level. So I want to spend some time right now talking about the Oakland eviction moratorium and clarifying some misinformation and trying to highlight the main points. Um, so first, let's talk about the Oakland moratorium, what it does. Um, it protects tenants from being evicted during the Oakland state of emergency. If your landlord gives you an eviction notice during the state of emergency, it is legally invalid. Um, or if your landlord gave you an eviction notice prior to the state of emergency and it expires during the Oakland state of emergency, it is also legally invalid. Um, there are exceptions, two main exceptions. If your landlord claims that you must be evicted because you pose an imminent threat to the health and safety of other occupants of the property, then there is a process by which they can give you an eviction notice and there is required language in there that, um, that must be included, which uh, spells out that the landlord is availing themselves of this exception. Um, also, Ellis Act evictions are accepted. So if your landlord is deciding that they are no longer going to be a landlord and they are going to permanently remove the property from the rent, the entire property from the rental market, um, that is also an exception. Other than that, blanket ban on eviction notices in Oakland. Um, second thing that it does, even after the state of emergency ends, it protects Oakland tenants financially impacted by the COVID-19 crisis from being evicted because they were unable to pay rent during the emergency period. Um, what this means is that you're not, you're not relieved of the obligation to pay rent if you can't pay rent during the state of emergency because of COVID-19, but you can't be evicted in the future for not paying that rent. Your landlord may attempt to collect it through small claims or collections cases, but that rent can never be used to start an eviction proceeding against you. Um, third thing it does, it prohibits late fees. So no late fees may be imposed for rent that became due during the local emergency if the rent was late for reasons resulting from the COVID-19 pandemic. And then the last uh, thing I want to mention that the moratorium does is it limits rent increases to con the consumer price index, which is 3.5% during the moratorium for tenants who have rent control. 
um, applicability. So these protections apply to all tenants in the city of Oakland who are covered by the Oakland Just Cause for Eviction Ordinance. This means it covers all tenants except for tenants who live in buildings that were constructed in 1996 or later, um, or tenants who live in the same unit as their landlord uh, and share a bathroom, kitchen, common spaces, those types of arrangements. Uh, or if you live in a health facility, nonprofit, substance abuse treatment facility, or certain transitional housing, um, I would I would always recommend you talk to an attorney, uh, either Central Legal or one of our partner agencies, if you want to determine whether you fall into any of these exceptions or how this rule, these protections will apply to your specific situation. And I'll give you more information on that in just a second. Um, so resources available to tenants to help navigate which of these protections, the, the most important protections right now for tenants in Oakland are the protections afforded by the Oakland moratorium. Those are the strongest protections in the state. Um, Oakland, I, we really commend our, our leaders here for, for paving the way and being a model of, of what can be done um, to protect tenants uh, during a time of crisis like this. Um, so, you know, I, I would encourage tenants to contact either Seattle Legal or any of our partner agencies if they have additional questions about protections and to particularly focus on your local protections because those are the strongest right now. So resources, uh, we have our rent adjustment program, which is still operating remotely. They provide tenant counseling. Um, you can contact them by phone or email. And also they are, uh, there will be forthcoming a mediation program where they will help landlords and tenants attempt to enter into repayment agreements. Um, Central Legal will be participating in that program to offer uh, pre-mediation counseling to tenants. And the rent adjustment program is also uh, going to be working with another provider to provide pre-mediation counseling for homeowners as well. Um, so the rent adjustment program is a great source of information for both landlords and tenants. I would say that could be your first stop. Um, second, uh, Centro Legal de la Raza, we are, we are working 100% remotely right now, but we're working at full capacity. So our phone lines remain open. We're operating um, three drop-in clinics a week. So you can call our phone number 510-437-1554 for an appointment and you can have a consultation with an attorney. Um, what else? Our website, Centro Legal's website, we have a lot of resources. We have a COVID-19 page um, and I'm hoping they'll post that somewhere in the information uh, which which has a lot of summaries about the different local moratoria the you know state uh, law pertaining to landlord tenant law during COVID-19 etc. Um, one other thing that we have just recently started because these laws are changing day by day you know and hour by hour we have tenants who call us and want to know how can we continue to be informed as there are developments we've started a text messaging system so if you send a text message to Centro Legal at 510-738-3906 um, you will be added to a text message update list whereby we will send you information about new developments new laws court closures all related to tenants rights during COVID-19 um, one additional resource, so Centro Legal administers a program funded by the City of Oakland, an anti-displacement collaborative program called Oakland Housing Secure, where we work with uh, several partners to uh, try to stem displacement in Oakland. Um, through that process, we continue to remain open, all of us in our partner agencies, Bay Area Legal Aid, Eviction Defense Center, um, East Bay Community Law Center. You can call any of our agencies. We have an internal referral program. So if you call one agency and it's not the appropriate agency to help you, we can make an internal referral and the appropriate agency will contact you. So um, all of that information is available on Central Legal's website as well. Um, and lastly, through the Oakland Housing Secure Program, we do have a, an emergency financial assistance program for tenants. So if uh, it, you can always call our hotline, um, get an appointment to have a consultation with an attorney and we can assess whether you're eligible for emergency financial assistance um, in that context. Similarly, Keep Oakland House is a fantastic resource and that's a collaboration between uh, Catholic Charities, East Bay Community Law Center, and uh, BAX. And they are fully functional right now as well. They're offering legal services in conjunction with emergency financial assistance. Um, okay, so I'm gonna address a couple of the questions that were uh, posed. Um, the number one question, uh, I can't pay my rent, what should I do? 
Um, so the number one thing I'm going to say is know your rights before you make any decisions or before you start engaging uh, with your landlord or signing any documents. Call Centro Legal, call East Bay Community Law Center, call the rent, rent and anybody just so that you are aware of what your rights are before you enter into an agreement. Um, and to know that the Oakland moratorium does prevent you from being evicted for non-payment of rent during the Oakland public health crisis, um, even after the crisis is lifted. Um, tenants are contacting us every day because they're being presented with repayment plans by their landlord and they're not sure whether they should sign them. You know, that's a deeply personal decision for each person. But again, I would suggest, strongly suggest or advise that you talk to an attorney first, show the attorney the document, we can walk you through it. We can weigh the pros and cons and give you advice as to, you know, potential um, good upsides, downsides. Um, and again, RAP is going to be making mediation services available forthcoming. So if you're a tenant and you're concerned about whether you should sign an agreement now, it may behoove of you to wait until RAP has this mediation program up and running and is able to facilitate that mediation for you. Um, okay. Okay. When does the moratorium expire? Uh, the moratorium is retroactive to March 8 and expires May 31st, but it may be extended by council. Um, however, the future protections related to non-payment of rent during the public health crisis do not expire. Uh, last question that continues to come up. If I cannot pay my rent because of COVID-19 during this public health crisis and the local public health crisis, do I have to give my landlord documentation, medical documentation, my bank statements, um, financial records? Um, so I will say that the moratorium does not prevent you from getting relief if you are unable to notify your landlord. If you are sick or you are ill, there is no deadline, there's no stop watch that says you must assert a right by a certain point in time. Um, the ordinance does not require you to. So again, that's a deeply personal decision and we would welcome discussing that with you. Give us a call. We're happy to talk you through it. Um, I would say, you know, you have a, you do have a right as well to not have to provide confidential medical information or confidential bank records. Uh, however, you should keep as much documentation as you can in the event that in the future you are in court having to litigate, um, you know, whether the non-payment of rent was actually related to COVID-19 or um, any other uh, issues related to that rent in the future. So that's it. I will, uh, I will pass the mic to my colleague. Great. Thank you so much, Monique. That was really helpful information. Um, I'll just add the, the wrap stands for the rent adjustment program that is run by the city of oakland do stay tuned both tenants and landlords could benefit from the mediation service that the rent adjustment program will be setting up with the city of oakland i um, also wanted to share the good news that keep oakland housed now has a fourth partner and that is the unity council uh, Keep Oakland House wanted to do a better job of reaching out to non-English speaking tenants in Oakland. Uh, and so uh, that that is a, a great new partner. Again, uh, emergency rental assistance, legal uh, assistance, and case management through Keep Oakland House. Uh, either go to their website, keepoaklandhouse.org, or you can call 211 to get connected with them. And last, I just want to interject that that eviction moratorium that Monique described also applies to small businesses. Uh, again, Oakland is unique that our eviction moratorium is not only for residential tenants, but also for small businesses that are renting their space. Uh, with that, I'm really excited to turn it over to Derek Schoenmacher. Derek is the workers' rights directing attorney also at Central Legal. Um, Derek, I know you've got some slides. Thank you for joining us tonight. A lot of questions from people who are not getting an income right now. Yeah, of course. Thank you for having me. I, I really appreciate this opportunity to, to reach um, so many folks in Oakland. I know at this time, um, in in my time being a workers' rights advocate at Central Lega, we've never seen anything even close to this crisis for working people um, throughout Oakland, throughout California, throughout the country, throughout the world. This is um, it's it's completely unprecedented, and um, and so you know, it's really important to be coming together and figuring out how to navigate the situation. 
because as we're seeing at local level, state level, federal level, new programs are being announced and implemented to try to support working people through this. There are new protections that people need to be aware of um, to, to, to try to navigate the situation and make sure that their rights are protected to, um, throughout this crisis. Um, so I'm the directing attorney with Central Legal de la Raza's workers' rights practice. Um, I've been at Central Legal for seven years. We've worked in close partnership with the city of Oakland Flint, um, around local workplace standards um, in the past few years. And, um, and, and in our practice, we really focus on making sure that low wage workers are able to get access to um, legal services, advice, and legal representation to make sure that they are able to pursue claims around wage theft, around um, discrimination, around retaliation in their workplaces. Um, and, and now more than ever um, are able to seek the benefits available through unemployment insurance um, and, and, and other programs that allow the folks to get some kind of relief. Um, in in reviewing the, the questions that came in um, from earlier um we saw a lot of questions no surprise really centered on how do people make a living right now how do people get some kind of financial support to make it by um it, it, the, the unemployment rates have spiked so dramatically and um, I, I saw that just in california there were a million unemployment insurance claims processed uh, that means there's many many more um, claims waiting in the queue because the, the agencies are overrun. And so uh, what I'm hoping right now and, and focusing on the questions that came up is to help address a little bit about what what those programs look like under unemployment insurance and new federal protections around unemployment and how folks can make sure to navigate that process um, so, that, so that you can have some kind of financial support through this time. I, I'll go to the next slide. So the question that came through was really centered on what what happens if I lost my job or lost hours or I was forced to take leave, and and the questions that I saw were um, wondering whether they whether folks actually were eligible for unemployment insurance benefits or any benefits, and so I'm going to try to make sure to highlight the the reach of this because because the benefits that are now available are um, much broader than is typically the case. Um, under our unemployment insurance program. Um, so unemployment insurance is a program that provides partial wage replacement for folks who have work authorization and have lost their job or lost hours through no fault of their own. Losing your job or losing your hours because of COVID-19 generally would qualify for that. Um, and, uh, and so the benefits under this program are typically from $40 to $450 per week. It's partial wage replacement. Um, that caps out at $450 and it's based on the wages that you were earning in the year prior to uh, applying um, your, your base period. Now, under the new Federal CARES Act, um, there's an additional contribution of $600 per week that, will, that folks will be receiving through July 31, 2020. So that really helps make up a lot of the difference between um, what folks used to receive under unemployment insurance and, and what their wages typically are. Um, and, and, and really critical to highlight that. Um, also, a question that came up several times was about, um, was from folks who have already been receiving unemployment insurance and are worried that they're running out of benefits. Um, the federal law also extended benefits by 13 weeks. So people should be eligible for extended unemployment insurance benefits under that law um, for up to 39 weeks right now. Um, and then an, a new program came out from the federal government, Pandemic Unemployment Assistance. Um, and this provides similar benefits to, uh, to UI, but it actually goes beyond that to reach workers who do, have not traditionally been able to get unemployment insurance. So um, a question we had in, in our, that was submitted before this town hall was around the situation for artists, um, folks who are working as freelancers, um, self-employed people. And, and the really important thing to highlight there is that you should be eligible for pandemic unemployment assistance. Um, 
if you're if you're losing income uh, and work as a result of COVID-19 and and so should be able to apply for those benefits and I'll describe what that application looks like shortly. Um, a quick note on this is that uh, it, I, I mentioned gig workers under pandemic unemployment assistance, but there's this really important law AB5 that was intended to make sure that employers like the gig economy don't uh, misclassify workers as independent contractors. So actually a lot of gig workers should be able to get unemployment insurance benefits and are better served uh, applying there first to seek unemployment insurance benefits. Um, the one, there's, this has highlighted a really big gap in these social safety net programs um, in that undocumented workers are not eligible for either of them. Um, and so instead, undocumented workers need to turn to grassroots relief funds um, and, and like the Oakland Undocumented Relief Fund that Centro has recently launched. Um, it's been really heartening to see the support that has of community throughout Oakland coming together to donate money that they have, pledging to donate stimulus checks, um, knowing that they are going to help support other community members who really don't have any relief programs to turn to in this in this really challenging time. Um, so I, I've definitely been really heartened seeing that program and seeing the response that we've had. We also had a really um, a, a really significant contribution from the city of Oakland's fund for um, public innovation, and um, so I'm really thankful for that support as well to make sure that folks who are excluded from our social safety net programs are able to receive some benefit in this time. Um, I'll go to the next slide. And uh, another question that has been coming up um, a lot is our questions around sick leave or caring for folks who are sick or quarantined. Um, and it's super important that we are all aware of these so that we're both able to protect our collective health and our own and ourselves um, from this uh, from this disease and also um, to make sure that people are able to receive compensation while that while they miss work um, and are also able to have their jobs protected while they miss work for sick leave um, so I just wanted to highlight that California law provides for sick leave um, and that's at least three paid days um, and, and it actually is often more than that, depending on your employer. Um, Oakland actually provides for stronger sick leave protections uh, through the voter approved measure FF, um, which uh, included Oakland's minimum wage and sick leave protections. Um, and the, the city of Oakland helpfully put out guidance on these protections, which I have linked here. Um, really, really important for employers and workers to know um, that that the sick leave should be made available in this time um, and that there shouldn't be unreasonable restrictions put on the use of sick leave um, for folks who are working at essential businesses and are, aren't going to need to miss work at this time. Um, so uh, an another couple options for income replacement right now uh, is through the state disability insurance program and paid family leave. Um, State disability insurance is for folks who um, are uh, have a serious illness or injury um, and are able to have medical certification of the illness. Uh, COVID-19 could qualify. Um, paid family leave is for folks who need to care for a close family relative who has a serious health condition. Um, and both of these programs are available to folks regardless of immigration status. Sick leave protections as well are available to folks regardless of immigration status. Um, so important to highlight. Uh, state disability insurance and paid family leave all leave can be applied for at um, the Employment Development Department. All right, let's skip ahead. Yeah, here we are. Um, so, uh, the EDD, the Employment Development Department, is the state agency that fields unemployment insurance claims. Um, and uh, they have many paths to apply. And I, I just want to say right now, because they're completely inundated and we are hearing that it's really difficult to get through on the phone lines, 
we're encouraging people to apply online. Um, and, and there's a link to that online application form um, that, that folks should use. Um, know that the, the process is, there's, there have been delays. Uh, the, the agency is really stepping up and trying to do things as quickly as possible, but um, it's, it's uh, moving slow because of how many claims they're getting. Um, the thing to know is that once you get your application in, you are preser preserving your time so that you can get paid for those weeks, um, even if they're not able to process it right away. Um, one, one other note, the pandemic unemployment insurance, because this law is brand new, this federal law is brand new, um, the Employment Development Department hasn't yet been able to assess the DOL guide, the Department of Labor's guidance around what they're supposed to do to implement this program. And so at the moment, the application is not yet available, but it should be up very soon. Um, and, and so folks should be watching out for that if you don't qualify for unemployment insurance, but um, could actually apply for this, this alternative assistance. Um, and then uh, the, for folks who are undocumented um, and are not able to get relief through UI or PUA, um, I've included the link here for our fund, Oakland.org, where people can apply for assistance to seek a, a relief uh, grant. We can go to the next page. And then I wanted to really quickly highlight these brand new federal protections. Um, the, the Family First Coronavirus Response Act um, included emergency paid sick leave, which is an additional two weeks of paid leave that meant, that is meant to be available to folks so that if somebody is exposed to coronavirus or ordered to be isolated because of exposure or they get sick, um, that you are able to immediately take these 80 hours of paid sick leave. Um, the, the list of uh, reasons for it are here. Um, and uh, one thing that's really important to highlight in this is that it, it can extend to folks who need to miss work to care for a child who, whose school or place of care is closed. Um, I know that that's coming up a lot um, here in the Bay Area. And so for folks who are home, parents who are home needing to care for a, a child, um, you, uh, you should be able to take this sick leave in order to take, give that care, um, provided your employer is covered by this act, because I'll get to, there's a couple exceptions to the act. Um, and actually that leave to care for a child um, is, uh, it can be extended to up to 12 weeks um, with partial wage replacement during that time. Um, and so really critical right for folks to be aware of and, and to raise with uh, your employers if, your employer is still in business, still, still, still there's work being done, but you need to be missing work because you're caring for a, a child and you should be able to get this support. Um, the challenge with this is that these protections have some really big gaps. Most significantly, they do not apply to employers with 500 or more employees and employers with 50 employees or less can seek a hardship exemption. So um it's not clear that everybody's not going to be covered by these benefits um but they do they do cover a large sector of the economy and folks should be aware of them um now uh i think we're ready to skip to the next slide and before i wrap up actually um i wanted to highlight something that has also been coming up just so folks are aware of it there's a lot of questions around essential services and workplace health and safety right now. Um, and so I encourage people and people scared about if they need to go to work, I encourage people to take a look at Alameda County Public Health Department's guidance on essential services um, because they have uh, provided guidance to employers and steps that they need to take to protect employees, um, even if they are in these essential service industries. Um, and so important for folks to be aware of that, be able to advocate with your employers to make sure that they're taking those precautions and keeping everybody safe right now. Um, and I'm happy, I'm looking forward to answering some more questions as they come up. Um, I've included here uh, Centro Legal's website on COVID-19 resources. We'll continue to update that page with new resources for the community. 
Um, right now, people can call our general line 510-437-1554 to seek um, legal advice on your circumstances. But I also want to flag that within the next week, we plan on uh, launching a helpline to help field these questions on an urgent basis so that we're able to respond really quickly to all the questions that are coming up um, from Oakland workers. So watch out for that. It'll definitely go up on that website as soon as it's launched. Um, thank you so much all. Um, and I look forward to answering your questions as they come in. Great, that was amazing, Derek. That was a lot of very helpful and comforting information. Um, I want to, before I turn it over to Alex McBride, who's been waiting patiently, I want to invite the audience to submit more questions. Uh, if you did not get your question answered about wellness, about mental health support, about tenant rights, about worker rights, uh, or anything else that's on your mind, now is the time for you to click the link that you're seeing if you're on a social media platform or to text 780-601-886 to the number 72855. This is Thought Exchange. It is a cool little app, artificial intelligence thing that is helping us um, get the questions from you as well as allow you to vote to star the questions to tell us which are the questions that are most interesting to you so we invite you to interact with thought exchange while we hear from Alex McBride. Alex is the Chief Resilience Officer of Oakland. It is a fabulous and a very important function, and it has never been more important than now as Alex heads up our community resilience function in our um, EOC. So Alex, please talk, uh, talk, share a little bit of information and then answer some of the top questions that you receive from folks before tonight's town hall. unmute myself. Can everybody, I think I'm on now. Thank you, Mayor. Um, it's been a real pleasure hearing from Dr. Bristol Smith, from Monique and Derek. I'm just really respect your leadership. This work cannot be done without partners like you. So thank you for your leadership. I'm, I'm taking notes as you've been talking. Um, I do have a few slides and while the slides are pulling up, I want to start on an optimistic tone. The governor announced a couple of days ago that the sheltering in place is working, you know, it is making a difference. Um, uh, and while we're trying to ensure uh, we remain sheltered in place, we as a city also need to do what we can to promote community health. So that's uh, helped our, that's been our focus this week, mostly around testing. And I'll share a little bit about our testing and as well as uh, ways to promote safe um, Instead of saying social distancing, we're talking, we're talking about using the term physical distancing and kind of touching on the points made earlier about mental health. We want to stay connected as possible. So we're, uh, at least in the EOC, we're talking about using the term physical distancing instead of social distancing. Um, but first, just quickly on testing, the next slide. The mayor shared we do, our, we are or have expanded our um, service for testing for our direct care service sectors. And um, you'll see the examples, healthcare providers, grocery stores, these tests are free and they're available to those with or without insurance. So, um, you know, as we're thinking about the, uh, the effects on an unfortunate economic disparities with certain communities not having access to tests, um, we're really excited to have the support of the Oakland Relief Fund uh, and our partners at uh, Brown and Tolan Physicians and Watts Seneca to help uh, set up this site um, the service is, as you, most sites um, that are doing testing, is appointment only. We don't want people coming to the site because of the physical distancing requirement. We want to ensure we, man we, want to ensure we manage traffic. The site is drive-through, but we do, obviously for people who don't have cars, we do have accommodations. So if you get an appointment, um, they will share details about how to show up uh, if you aren't driving, but we, we do have accommodations there. And the way we're um, distributing information and enrolling people in testing is through their employers. We're doing this for a couple of reasons. First, we want to make sure 
if we have someone who is showing symptoms, um, we want to know who their employer is so that we can get that information to that person's coworkers. Um, and it helps us with our tracing of potentially where the virus is spread. Uh, we have received, since the COVID-19 testing inbox is open, received um, lots of emails and, and enrolled based on our organization size, about 10,000 people uh, for the testing. Uh, the next slide talks a little bit about uh, the CDC's guidelines for testing and, and, and our site adheres to those guidelines. And if you have not been tracking the CDC website, it's changing, you know, constantly as we are learning more about this disease and also have access to more supplies. But at this point, we are planning to really be as thoughtful and strategic as possible about who we test and potentially limited test supplies. So these, this is a copy and paste from their website, with, uh, their March 24th guidelines and their latest. And you'll notice we are only focusing on um, individuals with symptoms. Well, so we're essentially able to test priority one, two, and three at our testing site. Uh, and this essentially means if you have symptoms and you fit in one of those direct care service categories, we're testing you. Um, uh, and uh, there is a, a slight caveat if you look at priority three, if you're a healthcare worker and may not be exhibiting a symptom, uh, the CDC has also shared that we may also test as well. So depending on which sector you are, um, we will provide those instructions to you through our COVID-19 testing at oaklandca.gov account with instructions on how to enroll. Uh, but if you if you want to just, our, our site will follow these CDC guidelines if we're, again, trying to be as thoughtful as possible about who we're testing. Um, and yeah, we'll, we'll please you can send us an email. The next slide shares a little bit of it, uh, um, as I mentioned, where we are to date. The site just launched our, on Monday. Our email uh, inbox, I think, opened on Sunday. We've enrolled uh, over 9,200 open-based direct care providers. Um, and essentially, this service is available in, in case one of these employees gets sick or starts having symptoms, they're able to make an appointment immediately and not have to worry about insurance or, or if they have insurance, it's a, an, another uh, avenue for you to get testing. We have noticed and we are uh, definitely trying to increase our outreach, our, our, our outreach to direct employers. So. You know, um, it's often where people are reaching out to us, but we know that this information doesn't get to everyone. So we are using, working with our community partners, working with other city staff who have relationships with organizations to ensure we're broadcasting this opportunity to the workers that are, you know, really sacrificing every day for us to live our lives. Um, and we want to ensure that this service is available for them and they're aware of this service. Um, this is a nice quote that we got from one of the providers uh, that, again, just gives people comfort to know that they can do this, do their work, and, and know that they have this service available. Um, next slide should be a little bit about um, what the mayor mentioned of earlier. So we're talking about uh, not social distancing, but physical distancing, and we know that um, our park spaces are... Um, have now been uh, closed. So I have a little bit more information. I want to pull up this um, info sheet so I can make sure I hit all the major points um, uh, to share about our Oakland slow street. So um, I actually got three questions in advance of this meeting about how people can safely recreate while maintaining the physical distancing rules uh, during our shelter in place order. And uh, we know that uh, the parks are becoming crowded um, we also know that our parks are the only place that Oaklanders like to walk. Uh, we know that our streets and sidewalks represent about 25 to 30 percent of Oakland's land, and we decided to take advantage of that resource. So uh, I'd like to definitely acknowledge uh, the hardworking teams at Oakland's Department of Transportation, my colleagues at the Parks Department, Public Works, and Emergency Services, who balance that need for more open space while also creating new spaces. Um, that encourage gathering. And the mayor's office has been working with Council President um, Rebecca Kaplan's office to find creative solutions um, to ensure that we can support Red Force better. So um, tomorrow you're going to hear the official announcement, which you're getting the preview tonight, uh, that in partnership with 
Oakland's Department of Transportation and President Kaplan will announce an emergency measure that allows Oakland residents more space to walk, bike, and run safely through their own neighborhoods. And we're calling it the Oakland Slow Street. Um, and uh, the map that is on your screen represents 74 miles of street that will be open for people to walk, bike, or run. Um, and uh, we also uh, have been thoughtful and strategic about ensuring that your routes are equitably distributed across neighborhoods in Oakland. Um, and as I mentioned, account for about 10% of Oakland Street. So we'll, you'll hear more about this exciting initiative. Um, and with that, I'm going to pull up a couple of questions. Some in my latest announcement, I think I just answered, um, but uh, we're excited about um, and I'm pulling up the questions in a moment. Um, we're excited about this new service for folks to access. So pulling up some of these questions. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll aim this just because we already answered it. Select road closures of cars like runners, pedestrians, and cyclists. Denver has done a similar initiative when we'll open. So you'll hear more about that tomorrow. Um, there is a, a good question about planning, our planning department. Right now it says, the question says, um, public notice for existing planning applications for new housing is typically done by, by mail with signs posted to the site. Um, how will this be handled during shelter in place? Uh, I did reach out to our um, planning commissioner. We are still trying, uh, there's not a specific plan in place yet, uh, but we are uh, looking at doing some training similar to what we saw with our city council meeting that was done, done online. Uh, we as city employees are trying to be as flexible as possible and looking at ways to get this information out. So um, the, the answer to that is we're working on it and then, um, hopefully in our next uh, Thursday meeting, our Thursday town hall, we'll have an update. I also want to flag our uh, uh, PIO team, our communication team in the city of Oakland has been doing excellent work and we get messages up every day. So I want to continue to point people to our openca.gov site. There's a red banner for COVID-19 relief that has up-to-date uh, up messaging. We're also, uh, we develop an outreach toolkit that uh, translates our uh, most important messaging uh, in eight different languages. Uh, so please continue to use that as a resource uh, as you're sharing information. Um, another question, and then we'll open it up is um sorry i'm on my phone and i always close my app uh i can here's the, here's the next question next question how is oakland supporting creative institutions and cultural nonprofits? so this is a great point that speaks to a lot of the work that the oakland relief fund has been supporting um first our oakland business Center.com website again, OaklandBusinessCenter.com has lots of resources for individual artists and art uh, organizations. Um, there are also there's also information about the Bay Area Arts Loan Fund, which is accepting applications now for emergency loans for arts organizations. Uh, the city, as I mentioned, with the Oakland Relief Fund and others, we're actively talking to philanthropic partners about specific funding for Oakland artists. And uh, we heard a little bit uh, just from Derek about the unemployment benefits and, and uh, resources there. I'll also name that the city's cultural affairs department is also offering a training to artists uh, to help them with their unemployment applications. And we'll be sharing more information on that soon. So those are some of the questions that I'll, and I'll pause there uh, so we can get more questions in. Thanks. All right, thank you, Alex. And one of the questions we got ahead of time was, could the mayor put a more pleasant virtual background in her uh, her, her appearance? And so I, I have satisfied action. This is a <laughs> photograph I took of Lake Merritt, um, actually on the winter solstice, walking with my best friend around the lake. So uh, sorry, Justin, I know you don't like when I use virtual backgrounds, but this was a specific request from someone in the public. We try. Um, so we are now gonna be doing something that we have never done before, so bear with us. Uh, you all have hopefully been submitting suggested topics or questions through the thought exchange 
And so we are now going to, and I think they can even share the slides so that we can actually see what the questions are that have bubbled up. Uh, Ivana or Matt, are you ready? Oh, good, here we come. All right, I see the join the conversation. This has both the text number and the QR code if you want to put in a question or a topic that you'd like. Have we not had enough time to get enough questions or voting ranking on the actual questions submitted? Um, again, there are three ways to join in the exchange. You can click the link in the chat. You can scan the QR code that is showing with your phone or you can text 780-601-886 to the phone number 72855. And then once you're in the exchange, you can share your thoughts and your questions, and then you can rate the thoughts or questions of others based on how much you agree. Five stars means you strongly agree, and one star means you strongly disagree. And that's how we can learn what is important to us as a community. And you can also see what other people are thinking uh, if you look in the discover section. Uh, so I, I do not want to, I, I'm gonna maybe address some questions while, it, please leave the screen up about joining the conversation, but um, I can address some other questions that we saw come in ahead of time. Um, I received a question what is the likelihood of martial law and how would it be implemented in Oakland? During highly stressful times, it is important to minimize interactions that might escalate into adverse events. I can tell you as the mayor of Oakland, I have no interest in instituting martial law, uh, no interest at all. Uh, this is an incredibly stressful time. I don't see how instituting martial law would reduce stress um, I think that we in Oakland should be very proud of ourselves. Uh, data shows that the Bay Area has one of the highest rates of compliance with the stay at home order. And so I believe that we need to lovingly uh, encourage each other to practice physical or social distancing, however you wanna call it, uh, maintain six feet apart, wear face coverings when you go outside, um, these are these are the things uh, that I think are far more effective than martial law. Um, a similar qu question, though, was about law enforcement practices. Uh, there was a question about sideshow enforcement. Uh, there was a very very disruptive sideshow, uh, not this last weekend, the weekend before, and then also uh, people are seeing rampant teen prostitution and human trafficking close to St. Anthony's. Um, so I do want to say, uh, again, thanks to our rapid deployment of this testing center and our ability to really monitor our first responders, our police department is out and working. We have three confirmed cases of COVID within our police department, but we were able to isolate those individuals quickly, test everyone they had had contact with, uh, and so uh, we are still responding. Um, the, the issue of the increase in prostitution around St. Anthony's is something that we have seen. Uh, we are attending to it. Um, the sideshows, we, we are having a special detail, uh, additional officers available on the weekend, uh, also in partnership with our sheriff's office. Um, I will say that we have not been in using fines or citations or even imprisonment, which is an option, believe it or not, for violations of the health order. We are, however, going to actually use citations based on the health order for anyone who is viewing a sideshow. This is something that um, was not come to lightly. We had a lot of consultation with community leaders in the areas that have been affected. This is something that we are going to try around sideshows only. Uh, but in general, our police department is not issuing citations. They are educating, they are warning, uh, but it does not seem to me productive in this time of extreme stress to give people financial citations when uh, so many people don't have any income. 
All right, we're seeing the the uh, kind of popularity contest come in. This is a fascinating. We're we're watching the ratings come together through this process. Yeah, I see a couple of questions that I could jump in on. Um, one is, uh, okay, move. Well, we'll talk. What do you do if an essential worker currently working with no with no health insurance? How and where do you get help if you get sick? If you are experiencing symptoms, um, please reach out to get testing. If you don't, if you don't have insurance, um, we, as I mentioned in our testing site, are offering testing for those with or without insurance if you're exhibiting symptoms, um, and for the health and safety of your coworkers and those around you. Uh, I would suggest to please as quickly as possible to get tested. Um, there was also another question about OUSD and hotspots. If you scroll down a little bit, there it is. Uh, yeah. Um, how can we provide OUSD internet or hotspots for distance learning? That's a great question. The COVID-19 relief fund um, recently um, um, shared or, or gifted or granted the Oakland Public Education Fund $500,000 to support uh, OUSD and initiatives like increased um, hotspots. Our Oakland Public Library is also, like, they have uh, 300, uh, a small amount of hotspots in circulation that they went out that I know are now rented out. Um, so they're also thinking about or planning to increase their stock. So we're working with a couple of parties internally and externally to support um, internet and hotspots as students continue to, to learn outside of school. Uh, it says, how can the city assist to ensure that homeless individuals get their stimulus checks from the government, outreach and helping them set up bank accounts, as well as filing tax returns? Um, Alex, is that one that you can answer or yeah. I that it's all right to say we don't know? Well, yeah, I will. I don't know about the stimulus checks specifically, but what I do know is that our emergency operations uh, center includes a full unit on our mass care and shelter services. So we are, we have um, lots of partners in the field, direct service providers that are serving our shelters, that are reaching out to those in transitional housing like our community cabins and to those in encampment. Um, so uh, there is uh, outreach for services like food, for ensuring um, we're working with the county to get testing, we're working with the state and the county to house them in hotels here in the city. Um, so uh, I'm not sure about the stimulus check, but I know if there, if that is in the pipeline, the, the good thing is that we have a lot of parties in place that are constantly interacting with that community and trying to support that community. I can take this offline though to ask specifically about the stimulus checks and how that's being implemented. Okay, we need you to scroll more actively on those questions. Once we start answering one, if you could scroll us to new ones. Okay, what has the city of Oakland done to cancel rent? Is there a reason it hasn't happened yet? Why can't, oh, go back, oh, ah. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry, I can't, uh, the, the rest of the question disappeared. So uh, I can tell you we, the, the city of Oakland does not have the legal authority to cancel rent. Um, if, if the city is seen as taking property away we actually can be sued and we have to pay a property owner for the value of their property. Uh, we are, I think we all are looking and continuing to explore other legal avenues. Some of them might be best done at the state or federal level. Um, and we certainly are uh, prioritizing in particularly our federal advocacy, rent relief as the highest priority. And if there is gonna be um, mortgage forgiveness, uh, that that has to be tied to rent forgiveness. Uh, if someone has a mortgage on a multi-unit building, uh, they should not get relief unless they are passing that relief on to their renters. So those are some of the things that we're advocating at the federal level with. Um, 
they are the federal level is the only level of government that is allowed to deficit spend that is allowed to actually borrow money spend more money than they have the state government and let me tell you the city government has to by law balance our budget we cannot spend more money than we take in and just like everyone else we also have been very much uh, impacted by this uh, emergency as far as uh, having our revenues reduced and potentially having to make some very difficult decisions as far as what city services we can provide um, because we rely on hotel taxes, sales taxes, which have all been also impacted by this. All right, I can't see the questions anymore. So I need the screen say I need the screen share on thought exchange. There we go. Uh, going, keep going. I think we hit hit these. You did. The, we did the. Uh, while there is less traffic, wouldn't it be a good time to fix the roads and keep city employees and contractors busy? Road safety is important, keeps people working. That is in fact considered an essential service. It is safety related and that work is continuing. So another example of continuing work is vegetation management. <laughs> Wildfires don't care if we're in the middle of a pandemic. So we are continuing to allow um, private property owners to perform vegetation management as well as do our own vegetation management and inspections during the crisis. I also got a question about home um, construction be before the, the Zoom started. Um, we, oh, I encourage you to go to the City of Oakland's website, oaklandca.gov, and look at the FAQs around construction. But basically, any housing project that includes affordable housing or has is has paid or will pay affordable housing impact fees. Those housing construction projects are allowed to continue under the county's health order. So again, projects that involve affordable housing. Uh, also construction projects that, in, that are for essential services are allowed to continue. If you have questions, go to the FAQ site uh, with on the city of Oakland's um, uh, the city of Oakland's website. Um, I see another question I could help with too. Many of our small business owners don't speak English and aren't tech savvy. Our uh, Oakland Business Assistant, uh, OaklandBusinessCenter.com, excuse me, OaklandBusinessCenter.com has uh, all of our materials in translated versions. Uh, so um, uh, hopefully that should that be, um, I think, helpful for that person uh, to speak one of the eight language shoes that I have that I have don't move in. don't move you're good <laughs> um also if you guys could post if our interns could post um uh, the physical address i believe it's um oaklandca.gov slash covid19 slash resources uh we also have a community resource page on our website and there are many uh, infographics, signs, uh, instructions that are translated into, I believe, seven different languages. We are counting on the community to try and distribute these um, vital pieces of information. Uh, the city of Oakland is actually doing translation for all of Alameda County uh, because of our equal access policies. Uh, and so we really do encourage you to spread the word. Um, and if you are uh, Cantonese speaking, Mandarin speaking, or Spanish speaking, you can call the mayor's office and we have bilingual uh, uh, workers available to speak to you in your language um, directly in the mayor's office. There's a question about property tax penalty exemptions. Property taxes are due tomorrow. Um, the Alameda County tax collector does have a form that will be up on his website that allows people to apply for a waiver to late fees. Uh, you do have to apply, but if you have property in Alameda County, you can apply to have any late fees waived. And I believe that is through July. Um, maybe Dr. Briscoe uh, uh, Smith can answer the question about updates from Highland Hospital. Uh, it says UCSF is posting about COVID patients 
every day. Um, how how are how are our health professionals faring? And what um, have you heard, if anything, from our public hospital doctor? Yes. Um, so I, I can't say that I could speak to that with any expertise in terms of UCSF versus Highland. Um, I would think probably it just comes down to a matter of resources in terms of availability. Um, but in terms of how our um, our uh, frontline workers are, are faring, it's extraordinarily difficult and there's a whole lot of um, fatigue. We're really seeing combinations of both vicarious trauma and actually explicit trauma in particular. So what we're really thinking about in terms of mental health is how we can provide direct services now, but also anticipating that we're gonna have a wave of um, needs coming down the pipe. Um, and so, you know, being able to try to anticipate uh, and provide services now. The UCSF website in particular does have particular resources that are available for their um, workers um, and part of the UC system, but I know that other systems are trying to make that available as well. Um, and also I have the mic, I did see a um, question kind of coming up regarding what is being done to support um, our Asian community as they face increasing rates of um, xenophobia. Um, and there are a number of resources that are becoming available, um, including uh, Saturday workshops um, provided in multiple languages for the community. I'll get the link for that and provide that in the chat, but I do want folks to be able to reach out to our um, providers that are around and also some of the mental health services that are available for supporting um, our Asian community. Also that there is a resource, um, the Asian American Psychological Association and the California Psychological Association also have available um, both uh, recommendations and resources specifically for um, those really being impacted by the level of racism that is uh, also uh, raising up uh, during this particular time. But I'll, I just was able to, to pull up the, the link for some of the services and we'll put it in the chat. Great, and I'll quickly address the um, question about uh, relief measures for landlords. Uh, our governor, Gavin Newsom, negotiated with all of the banks that uh, do mortgages in California to provide at least a 90-day um, uh, holiday for mortgage payments uh, that's a big deal so if you are a landlord and you are paying on a mortgage for your properties do check with your bank because they have all agreed to provide holidays for mortgage payments uh, during this crisis um, i don't know if alex wants to take the next two about uh, toilet paper i know um, i finally found some it was a big day in our family um, and then also the goal yeah. for numbers of test kits in the city and region yeah we we got this question at first i don't the city to my understanding we don't have the authority to to um demand that stores uh sell certain amounts of supplies um, we are, though, hearing on a national level that our um, our chain, our grocery store chain, our you know uh, our supply chain is not inhibited here. You know, we are encouraging residents to not feel like they have to take many products all at once. Um, we, you know, if you, uh, the instructions now are you really shouldn't be going to a grocery store more than once a week. Uh, so being able to get what you um, enough to help you for the week, then help others be able to have access to um, items like toilet paper. Um, and then for the goals of number of test kits, so uh, the, the point I always try to mention, but I don't think mentioned today is that, so the city does not have a health, the city of Oakland does not have a health department. Um, we are reliant on our Alameda County as our local health jurisdiction to really drive the response. Our goal or our role with the testing is has kind of been a, a, a an area or gap that we thought we could fill, uh, but we certainly defer to the county. Um, just to give you a, some thoughts on numbers, the test site we have right now um, can uh, process about 250 tests a day, uh, and that's a pretty, that's sort of on the lower side of the scale. Um, we're not seeing that demand yet because I think that's also based on where we are on the curve. Uh, we're not seeing so many people with symptoms that are re requiring those tests. Uh, but I think we're just trying to be, hence the CDC guidelines, we want to be as thoughtful as possible so that if we are seeing that peak, we have those tests available uh, to get results to people um, really quickly. 
But at the end of the day, the goals around are how many tests, what people we're trying to test is really gonna come from the county. Great, thank um, you, Alex. I'm gonna yeah. defer on the question about um, helping students catch up. We will try and get someone on from OUSD. I do want to acknowledge that uh, Oakland Unified and our teachers union did reach an agreement on how we are going to be um, doing distance learning this school year. So that's very exciting. Um, that is up and posted. So hopefully we're gonna see more distance learning work coming from our public schools. And then also know that the Oakland Public Library uh, through their website has tutoring available. Monique, you have a question. Can, can my landlord charge me late fees or interest on the money I'll owe him in three months? Uh, so as long as you are protected by the moratorium, as long as you have just cause eviction protections in the city of Oakland, um, no late fees may be imposed for rent that became due during the local emergency if the rent was late for reasons resulting from the pandemic. So the answer is probably no, but feel free. You can always go to our website. We have a really helpful guide that was draft guide to the moratorium that was drafted in collaboration with all of our partner agencies. And there's a link to that on um, the Center Legal website. And you can always call us if you have questions as to the applicability of the moratorium to your specific situation. Great, and then I think the next question is for Derek. Um, I know some community resources you can access by calling 311, like, you know, need for Meals on Wheels, but a lot of this is about how to access uh, public benefits. Derek, what uh, advice do you have for the process? You know, um, I don't know that I can speak to that specifically because I'm, I'm not so versed on the public benefit side. Bay Area, Bay Area Legal Aid is a great resource for getting, getting access or navigating public benefits questions. Um, but uh, I, I believe that 311, and, and we will be- No, 211. Uh, Three one one is for your pothole. Two one one. I got, I got thrown off. Yeah, yeah. Um, no, but uh, but 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 I believe that they will be able to connect folks to services like Centro Legas Helpline when we get that up and running. So we'll be reaching out to them. Great. Um, Legal Aid at Work uh, is a great organization. We've had one of their attorneys on. They are doing phone counseling during the crisis. So that's another really good resource. Um, I think I just talked about the mortgage holiday. Uh, please contact your bank. Uh, every bank in California uh, did a deal with the governor to do at least three months of mortgage holiday. I think Bank of America is doing um, a holiday as long as the health crisis is in place. Uh, re uh, how about, uh, see, I think I also talked about property taxes. You can apply for a, a waiver of late fees. Um, I think Dr. Briscoe Smith, again, there's a question about how can a caregiver of a vulnerable spouse, I'm black, address the problem of physical distancing on public transportation? Yeah, and I see here he also just that this person is also experiencing or having their, their partner experience harassment. And I think I think that's an invitation for all of us that if we're on those spaces and in those places, the ways in which we should speak up uh, in allyship and, and help out. Um, so we have to understand that people are stressed right now and having a hard time, but it's not an excuse for us to not operate out of the most kindness and generosity um, possible. So I, I see this person kind of ask do to manage the harassment, I would hope that there's someone else around who'd be able to speak up um, around that. Um, and, you know, um, hopefully there's enough kind of space for us to be able to move around in those kind of ways. But I, I think this is basically an articulation of the types of stressors that we're really seeing and the type of stressors that are happening for um, folks along um, these lines of uh, racial uh, issues. So I appreciate the question and it's an opportunity for us to kind of pause and know that our community is desperately in need of some help and support and people speaking to that. Um, doctor, th there was a question on Twitter that I don't think got into this exchange mm -hmm. um, about mental health and race. Mm -hmm. um, but what, what can you share with regard to that? I mean, so, I mean, the way for us to kind of think about this is we can think about issues of stress. It depends broadly what you un understand mental health to, to be. 
Um, so I'll kind of begin with kind of a point of resilience and with my own community, which is that, you know, mine is a community of African-Americans that are resilient and strong and well and have overcome incredible adversity. Um, so I don't want to speak to, you know, that a group of people is more likely to have more uh, mental health issues. Rather, a group of people is more likely to be impacted negatively by systems of oppression that show up in terms of levels of distress. So what we're seeing here in terms of mental health um, is also what we're seeing here in terms of health in general. We can think about this as social determinants of health. Disproportionate experiences of poverty, incarceration, homelessness are all stress factors that impact all of us. Uh, in our society, those are disproportionately impacting um, people of color. So that's the way that I kind of think about it. And, and I think we should be able to kind of view and hold each person with their individuality. Um, and again, offer that kind of grace to understand that people are struggling through their own things. Um, and let's see how we can be supportive to each other. Great, thank you. Um, I'll take the next one. Is there talk about Lake Merritt being closed? People are not following shelter in place and it's too crowded for social distancing. Uh, for now, we are trying to keep incredible assets like Lake Merritt open. What is shut down is picnic areas, tennis courts, and playground structures. Basically anything that has a surface that could be touched, that is closed down. But um, the other thing we are gonna try to do to manage Lake Merritt better is to have one way pedestrian, jogging, biking traffic. So everyone can go around the lake. I think it's clockwise, but they're gonna be trying to implement. Um, we did look at being able to close streets around the lake to help people spread out, but our traffic engineers um, ran into a lot of challenges around that and chose not to do that. So we are gonna continue to try and keep Lake Merritt open, but um, we have a lot of signs out really urging people to social distance. Do remember that if somebody is with their own family or household member, they don't have to social distance with them. So they may in fact be complying with the directives. Um, I don't know if Alex, you wanna take, it's a very much a resilience question. The president stated today that there will not be nationwide testing for everyone. How is Oakland planning ahead on public safety and business reopenings? And then if you could scroll yeah, I th questions. Yeah, yeah, I think there are a couple of ways we're doing that. One is we are really partnering closely with the county. One instant example is when we saw the national trend come up about racial disparities uh, and, and not really being able to track what's happening um, racially, we partnered with the county to advocate to state and federal level to ensure that there was, um, you know, that we had that type of um, support. Uh, I think it, I think our um, advocacy with the county is going to be really important. I also think that what we're doing long term um, in the emergency operations center, we're right now in response, but are very, very much uh, beginning to think about recovery and what does that mean and what tools need to be in place to ensure that uh, we have the most vulnerable the people who are hit hardest right now have the tools they need to recover. Um, the planning ahead piece is, um, you know, uh, it's something we're all learning together. This is, you know, something that's unprecedented. Uh, but I think, again, based on our partnership with important entities like Alameda County, the state, I think we're lucky also to have really great, strong state leadership. Um, we are, uh, I think, really trying to think through that. Um, and, and one way of doing that is trying to really have that testing service be in place so that we're able to immediately get folks who may not have access to testing um, tested and uh, you know treated to ensure that the disease is not spreading. Um, and Alex, do you wanna also address the question about public transportation, bus and train routes that have been uh, reduced? <laughs> So yeah, I don't know the answer to that question, um, and uh, I'm I'm texting my I'm texting many city colleagues that are helping me. I'm not sure if I'm going to get a text in a couple of minutes, um, but I, I'm not aware of a plan on that uh, to reduce public transportation. Um, but I, I I I don't know the answer for sure. That's something we can follow up on. All right. Um, I also saw a question about whether uh, retirees will be eligible for the um, federal stimulus. 
Um, according to the CARES Act, most single adults will receive $1,200, or married adults will receive uh, $2,400 and an extra $500 for each child under 16. However, the amount is reduced for any amount a single adult earns over $75,000 per year, or a married couple over $150,000 per year. An individual re will receive no payment at all if they are childless and earning more than an average of $99,000 per person, single or married. Um, you should know that I uh, have tried to organize a big lobbying effort. The idea of a one size fits all stimulus package for individuals really does not make sense in a country that has wildly different costs of living in different regions. And so that is what the original stimulus packet did. Uh, many of us are lobbying for something that is a lot more equitable and equity based in the fourth stimulus package, which Congress is currently negotiating. That's an answer to that question. Um, Derek, there's a question about the um, $600 per week for someone who is already on unemployment. Yeah, and, and I have good news on that one. Just, uh, just a few hours ago, we learned that that $600 is going to be showing up in, in unemployment insurance payments starting on Sunday. Um, and it's going to be applied automatically for, for folks who are already receiving unemployment insurance. Um, so there's no need to apply separately for that. That is great news. Um, there's a question on the shelter in places effect on city projected revenues. Um, I am I am sorry to say that our initial projections for this fiscal year, so the year that ends June 30th, we are currently estimating a 32 to 34 million dollar deficit. We are taking some actions right now to start to address that. Um, we are going to be uh, bringing some uh, re recommendations to the city council with regard to deferring some payments for long-term uh, liabilities for retirees, as well as contributions to the rainy day fund, because it is raining. Uh, we do have a rainy day fund in Oakland, but it has not been in place that long. And so uh, while it will help a little bit, uh, we are very much worried that we are going to see service impacts. We, of course, will start by freezing vacant positions. Uh, obviously layoffs are going to be our last resort, but you are going to see discussion about that um, over the, the weeks ahead. I should be presenting my um, proposed budget to the city council for the coming fiscal year that starts July 1st. Um, I should be presenting that on May 15th. So um, I will have more information ahead, but yes, the city's revenues have been very much impacted, particularly with reductions in sales tax revenues, reductions in hotel taxes, um, as well as anticipated reductions in property taxes. Um, Alex, there's a question about, can someone unemployed receive the COVID-19 test or undocumented? Uh, health and safety for all? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's a great question. Um, the question is the point. Yes, we are. We're asking you to reach out to the COVID-19 testing account. We are uh, based on lots of factors. Like if this person is unemployed and exhibiting symptoms, we want to ensure that they get tested. Ideally, though, we uh, we are hoping to find those that are employed to then connect to um, potential larger groups of, popu of people. Uh, but if you are experiencing symptoms and you are um, are unemployed, uh, we will try to accommodate. Uh, and uh, at, at, you know, we're again changing constantly based on the supplies that we have. Um, but if you reach out to the COVID nineteen uh, COVID nineteen testing account, if that's something that we as our testing site can't accommodate, at minimum we can give you resources to do so. So just please reach out, and we're hoping to uh, adapt. And Alex, can you also address the question about the Small Business Emergency Grant Program? Yeah, um, 
and, and sorry to this person that they that this person says they weren't they didn't know about the fund. This is a result of uh, a survey. Uh, we had 1,100 responses to a survey that we launched um, uh, a few days following the shelter in place. And this is us constantly trying to balance rapid delivery of resources while also getting as much input as possible. So we, we had that survey opened. We only had the funding to, uh, to meet only 10% of that need, only 90 small businesses. But we recognize even based on that survey that there's a lot of demand. Um, so uh, the, the the additional relief uh, is something that we're thinking through right now. Uh, again, another uh, another uh, update that we'll be providing either on the Oakland Business Center website or on OaklandFund.org, which is the, which, which was the source of the um, ninety uh, the, the cash assistance to the ninety small businesses. Um, and, and I'll think through, I'm not sure if there are plans to reopen that survey um, uh, because we're, we don't have sort of a way to fund potential additional um, uh, applications. Okay, so what about, other, what about, what about other, other small business grant programs? How about the SBA's Paycheck Protection Program? Yeah, so that's all up on the website. I guess I'm kind of sensing that the grant application process came and went without them knowing it. I want them to, I, I agree, there's lots of resources they can get on the website, but we may also, I'm not sure if we're opening up our survey to get more information about businesses and, and learn about what's happening so that we can be proactive in sharing information. So um, our, our website has resources, but we may also open up our survey again. Yes, but also as far as other business resources, Facebook is doing uh, $15 million of grants to small businesses. Please go to uh, your favorite bank and ask about the SBA forgivable loan. So it's you, you take it out as if it's a loan, but if you use it to actually keep people employed, they will forgive that loan. Um, that's a pretty big deal. Um, I'm also a huge fan of Kiva.org, interest-free, fee-free loans for very small businesses that often don't qualify for traditional loans. They also lend to undocumented uh, entrepreneurs, um, and it's crowdsourced, so it, it's not you're not supporting a bank. <laughs> Um, in fact, I have a question for me. What are you doing to address the banking industry? Visa and other banks will want their interest in late fees. What are you doing to address this so people will not become slaves to their banks? Uh, first, I'm a huge fan of Kiva, which is not a bank. Uh, so that is how we, we uh, kind of create the bank of us. That's a, it's kind of a public bank in a lot of ways. And then um, also we are working with the governor's office and at the state and federal level, just uh, as the mortgage holiday was negotiated at the state level, uh, that is where we are going to be advocating for the similar type of forgiveness uh, with, with consumer debt. Uh, that's a very good point. Um, I do want to recognize that we are three minutes till our end time. I want to um, be sure that... Um, People do uh, respond to our survey about whether or not tonight was useful, what you would like to see next week. But while I do that, I I'm, I'm, maybe we'll invite um, uh, the doctor to give us some closing words um, as we get ready to sign off tonight. Dr. Briscoe Smith. Thank you. You know, again, just thank, thank you all and thank you Oaklanders for, for coming together in this moment. Um, and just, you know, a moment for us to kind of pause in this extraordinarily holy time for so many people. We've got Ramadan at the end of the month. We have so many people that are in places of praise and worship, and it's an opportunity for us to um, get centered on um, what keeps us connected and what keeps us grounded. So there's a just an invitation for us all to um, pay attention to what helps us feel really connected and grounded. Um, and I just like to, you know, say that there are, blessings everywhere that we have to look for. This is an extraordinarily difficult, difficult time. And I'm at as we all talk about the suffering. Um, and I'm really hopeful that we're all going to be really committed to helping each other out and to giving ourselves and each other the grace that we all deserve. Um, 
I think that is a beautiful note to end on. If all the other speakers are okay with that, um, let us end with um, that those beautiful words and a prayer, a wish, a reflection on grace, on grace during this Holy Week. Again, tomorrow is officially a day of reflection in the city of Oakland. Thank you, everyone. I hope you found these resources helpful. I hope that you enjoyed being in community with people who care so much about trying to take care of you and each other as we get through the COVID-19 pandemic together um, as a beautiful city of Oakland. Thank you. And